Hello and welcome everybody to another custom series here. This is a continuation of the homemade labels. How resilient is photographic paper? Now, this is meant to be actually helpful to people. If you think, oh, I'm just going to print this out on photo paper like I did in the last episode, I have some serious doubts about the longevity of this material, especially unlaminated, just glossy photo paper. So you can say I printed some more out, uh, different little things here and there, trying to figure out some interesting things, but whatever. That's not the point. The point is that we're going to test it against everyday things. What about water-based things? Like, I don't know, mucus from your face. A Jew. What will happen to your photo paper? And there's all kinds of different little tests we can do here. Let's just take one little drop here. And a Jew. Oh, dear. Oh, no. There's water on the... Oh, no. How are we ever going to... What should I do? Quick. Somebody help. How am I going to get the water off of this label? I don't know. So we're just going to let it sit for like 24 hours. See if that affects it in any way. Hmm. I wonder what else we could use. All right, so while those are being slowly eaten away and destroyed, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, we have some other things we want to try. Now, there's always this thought of, oh, well, I can just use photographic paper and I can treat it with something. So I'm going to try a clear coat. Uh, but more interesting, I want to, oh, I also, actually, I also want to use some, I'm a painter, so I want to use some of my acrylic varnish here and see if that uh, will seal these in a useful way. So we'll try some of that. And the other thing that I was, where I was going with this is I want to take some of these labels and just cut out the pentagons and I want to glue them in place and then I want to see if I can fill the outside with something. You know what I mean? To make it more like an inlay. So I was thinking about using something like a gesso here. Just put layers and layers of this, see how it works. See if we can slowly fill that with a medium and then put a clear coat over that. See how that works out to make it more like a permanent inlay style chip. And <laughs> I have my suspicions because I'm pretty familiar with this stuff. I have my suspicions about how it's going to work out, but I'll bring you guys along on the adventure as well. I'm just super excited to try this out. So I'm going to cut these out in the Pentagon shape and we'll see how that works out. I'm excited about all of this. And we are back. <laughs> Why? All right. Now, somebody out there is thinking this is just wanton destruction. And you're right. But I mean, there is kind of a takeaway here. The idea of using photographic paper is just not a good idea. Let's just get that out of the way straight away. Not recommended. Don't use photographic paper. Uh, before we talk about the damage, let's talk about costs real quick. Photographic paper plus the cost of the glue or adhesive or the labels or whatever you're printing on. So you have your media and then you have the cost of the ink. And the estimate for my example here, you're looking at about $60 worth of ink. You're looking at about $30 worth of paper. And so you add in the cost of super glue, which is going to be another 10 bucks. You're looking at $100 for 300 labels. A hundred, that means you're looking at more than a professionally made label at 30 cents a label or 30 cents per two. So it's 15 cents a label. At this point, when it's cheaper to go out and get something done professionally and it's higher quality and it's going to last longer, just go out and get it done professionally. That's my conclusion. But let's look at some damage here for academic reasons, if for no other reason. Photographic paper, water. This is the one that I dripped right on camera, took a little dropper and put water right there. You can see a little ring right there. So every time somebody sneezes, anytime somebody spills something, anytime any moisture hits your chip, if you're going to use glossy paper, damage. Okay, that adds up over time. Um, the other example, I went out in the shop and I put, I did three chips here with some little examples. This one is acetone. Acetone did do a little bit of damage. I'll have to roll in a picture, but there's a little damage here. The drop was actually covered the whole five. The problem with acetone is it's so volatile, it just evaporated off, just woof, gone. Before I even put the drop of denatured alcohol on here, I looked back at this one and it was almost all gone. The acetone had just evaporated off. So volatile, that stuff. So denatured alcohol, people call it DNA. There's always the, the biochemist out there who's like, it's deoxyribose nucleic acid, it's not denatured alcohol, duh. We know that, we know that. And again, same problem. 
evaporates off super quick. Now, here is where it gets interesting. Windex. I thought the Windex would be very similar to water. Let's just actually roll these out so we can compare. Not so. The ammonia in the Windex really got to this photographic paper. There you have it. If you're cleaning around photos, stay away from Windex. And again, if you listen to my advice, you won't have glossy photo paper on your poker chips, but hopefully nobody does, and keep them away from Windex if you do. So not only are professionally made labels the same price or less expensive than photographic paper, they're more durable too. Well, I guess we should test that, so when we get some in, we will test. And that's our next episode. Now, let's talk about fillers. So this is some gesso. It's like just, you know, it's acrylic with some additives trying to act as a filler. So let's talk about some things like that. The gesso didn't work. You can see it clumps up. It's hard to layer this on effectively. I cut this out and then I tried to fill this with gesso to give it more of an inlay look or feel. Didn't work. The cracking here, lack of flatness, just a terrible thing, okay? I didn't use epoxy. I'm pretty familiar with two-part epoxy, but it's just too messy and I, can't, I couldn't imagine it working better than any of this. This is a clear coat spray paint that actually sprayed into a cup and dropped on here. It does protect the photographic paper, but it doesn't act as a good filler. And so I tried it with a circular label. I just took a label and I tried to clear coat it, but it clumps up if you use an eyedropper and it's just not worth the time. Are you really gonna sit and fill all of this area with clear coat? All right, what about the Liquitex? I, I'm a painter and I use this on my paintings, but on photographic paper, it bleeds all over everywhere. Not recommended. So, I mean, photographic paper, the best thing to do is the, the spray varnishes and hope they come out flat and it's just not effective and it's just adding more cost and more time to a product that I just can't really recommend. It'd just be more effective to go out and get something more appropriate. And that takes us to our next episode. So is this wanton destruction? Well, hopefully I can dissuade you from making the same mistakes I do and using photographic paper. So hope this was interesting and helpful. If you thought it was helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you want to support us, visit the link below for Patreon and support the channel. We have lots going on on Patreon, actually. And leave your comments. Tell us what you think. If you have a better homebrew system for homemade inlays, labels, let us know in the comments. Maybe we can explore that in a future video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is John Hobby.